Morning, everybody. The old captain comes here live from Crooked Creek. And we're very much alive this morning because not only are we in a canoe, but we are paddling down the creek. We've already come up the creek, so um, we're heading back down the creek. But I thought I'd do something just a little different this morning and maybe let you see some of the things that I see almost on a daily basis. But if you look closely, you can see that the seasons are definitely changing. Leaves are starting to turn, the leaves on the water and that sort of thing. But um, we're not here to talk about leaves in the creek. We're here to talk about about the Lord, talk about Jesus. Well, this week our lesson falls in the book of Acts. And um, primarily the first part of Acts 18. And Paul finds himself in the city of Corinth. Now Corinth was a, a major seaport, a major city in the region of Achaia. He had left Athens and he came across the isthmus that goes to the peninsula there and then into the city of Corinth. Now, Corinth was quite a seaport town and quite a business area, but it was not, it was known for that, but it wasn't primarily known for that. It was primarily known for that because of its sexual immorality, because of its, um, debauchery and sin and someone has said that you could compare and say well Corinth was like Las Vegas on steroids so you know the saying what's done in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas they probably they probably weren't the ones first ones to say something like that they probably said that in Corinth you know 2,000 years ago but um, at any rate um, there was a temple there to the to the goddess Aphrodite, and she was the goddess of love and fertility, and I'm told and I'm read that there were a thousand um, prostitutes that were involved in that temple, and they'd come down to town and sell their wares in the name of religion, so, so you, might, you might feel like it was, a, it was a pretty popular place, needless to say. Well, you don't have to go to Corinth to find sin. You don't have to go to um, Las Vegas. You don't have to go to, to New Orleans. Uh, my way of thinking, there's probably sin in Edenton, Georgia. There's probably some up in Milledgeville. You know, there may be some sin in your town or in your home or in your camp or in your life. Who knows? But Paul, he was persistent and he in every town that he went to, he preached Jesus as the Messiah. He went into the synagogues, first of all, because of his Jewish background. He, he used, it said that he reasoned with the scriptures. He reasoned using God's word and the, and the holy scriptures of the Jews, the early scriptures, to point them and to show them that the scriptures pointed pointed to Jesus. Well, just like today, sometimes it was accepted, sometimes it was rejected, sometimes it made people angry, and sometimes people said, well, let's ponder that and we'll come back to it. But a lot of times he was run out on a rail. He was, um, he was um, beaten, he was left for, left for dead after being stoned, shipwrecked, uh, in prison, on and on and on. And you would think, well, my word, didn't he ever get discouraged? Didn't he ever want to just give up and quit? I wonder how, how many beatings the old captain would have to take before he quit. You know, I don't even like a, a good hangnail, let alone a beating with a rod, so I'm not so sure how long I would last. Certainly nothing like Paul. I hope I would, but you don't know till you have to experience that, I suppose. But... But anyway, um, in chapter 18, about verse 19 or somewhere in there, about the middle of the chapter, um, just as an encouragement, um, the Lord appears to Paul in a vision. And he tells Paul, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. 
Now, why would he tell Paul, do not be afraid? Well, I'm not real smart, but I figure he told him that because he probably was afraid. And so he said, do not be afraid because I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and they're not going to harm you here. And uh, I'm going to be with you. And he says, you need to hang out in Corinth for a while because I have many people here. Many people, he said. And, um, and two thoughts about that. Some people think, well, maybe he already had some converts there. And certainly that's probably true. But the Lord was saying the, the fields are widened to harvest. You know, there's tons of people that need me, tons of people that need my salvation, and I need you just to keep on keeping on. I need you to be faithful. I need you to keep doing what you have been doing wherever you go. And he said, I don't need for you to give up, that I'll be with you. Well, not only that, he sends Aquila and Priscilla to encourage him. He's encouraged by um, Timothy and by Silas. And so um, he, he does. He keeps on, keeps on preaching the word. And, and that um, pretty much ends his second missionary journey. Well, so what? Where does that leave us? You say, well, what about me? I'm, I'm in this situation. I'm in that situation, you know. We've just lost a loved one. We've just gone through this. We've gone through that. And we're facing an election that's going to change, change the whole world. And, oh, wah, wah, wah. You know, just all kind of, all kind of complaining, all kind of going on. And um, I'm reminded of, a, of an old, old song. It's an old Negro spiritual. And I um, don't know when it was written. There's no date on it. But I'm sure a lot of us have sung this as a child, and um, it's entitled, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Now, people that are not believers have said, bless your heart. You're just a narrow-minded, poor old thing. That's a crutch, that, that Bible that you thump or that stuff that you spurt out all the time. That's just a crutch, you, you know. That's, that's really just a bunch of hogwash. Well, you have your hogwash and I'll have mine, but um, I firmly believe that God is sovereign and that um, one day I'll stand before him and I pray and hope that he'll say, Horace, well done, well done. And so um, we, we have, to, have to know that he does indeed have the whole world in his hands there's like four verses and i don't see too well so most of it's pretty easy to remember so just bear with me but the first first um verse says he's got the whole world in his hands 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 now the song doesn't say you know he's got part of the world in his hands or occasionally he has the world in his hands or from time to time if the wind and the tides just right he might have some of the world in his hands it says he's got the whole world in his hands second verse says he's got the wind and the rain in his hands he's got the wind and the rain in his hands he's got the wind and the rain in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the little bitty baby in his hands he's got the little tiny baby in his hands he's got the little tiny baby in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got everybody in his hands he's got everybody here in his hands he's got everybody here in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands now folks 
I don't know who has you in your hands. It may be your portfolio. It may be your bank account. It may be your um, legend of being this and that as an athlete or, or whatever, your reputation. Well, I, my hope, as the song says, is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Nothing else matters. Nothing else counts. Um, this weekend, Ramona's precious mother, 96 years old, went home to be with Jesus. And um, for the first time in our married life for 51 years, we are without a parent. We have had one or more parents since we were 20 years old. And for the first time ever, and we're approaching 72, we don't have a parent. And so they have been the matriarchs and the patriarchs of our group for all these years. And now I find myself holding that scepter. So that's my responsibility to be a leader, to be an example, and to hopefully live in a manner that would be pleasing, pleasing to the Lord. But this I know, he does have the whole world in his hands. And if you are a believer, if you trust in him and know him as your savior, then you are in very good hands. So I thank you for coming by today. I hope you've enjoyed our little cruise. I've rambled a bit, but no apologies there. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this morning's hymn of the week. Thank you for um, stopping by once again. Thank you for those of you who who um, follow us every week. If you get a chance, just share this with someone else if it's been an encouragement to you. And um, oh, thank you. <laughs> you got to watch some logs. But um, thank y'all for for supporting us today. And um, I look forward, hope you have a good week. Hope you've had a wonderful weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next week for our Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week. Until then, you take care and God bless.